and the Annie E. Casey Foundation. Coming up on NCM TV, hip hop artists, executives, and activists met to discuss the role, responsibility, and direction of the industry and culture. All next on NCM TV, New California Media. No one cares about race anymore. It's talking about black people. It's impossible to define what an Asian American film is. Asian Americans and exotic features. Culture and identity is the issue. And we're in this together. We are intertwined. This is our race. We call ourselves the New California Media. Hello and welcome. I'm David Mohammed, your host of NCM TV, New California Media. This is your program for the news and views of the nation's emerging new majority. Widely misunderstood and maligned, hip-hop has become the predominant youth culture, crossing racial, religious, and geographic boundaries. Hip-hop mogul Russell Simmons and longtime civil rights activist and black leader Benjamin Chavis Muhammad have teamed up to create the Hip Hop Action Network, which has hosted a series of hip hop summits. Recently in Los Angeles, luminaries of the industry and black leaders met to discuss economic development, political empowerment, and social responsibility. We'll take a look at the recent hip hop summit in Beverly Hills, organized by Russell Simmons, who invited Minister Louis Farrakhan to give the keynote address. And I want to help you to see who you are so that you can accept the responsibility that God and time has put on your shoulders. You really are the leaders of young people all over our planet. Your voices, your words, your rhythm have attracted young people in all of the countries of the earth that allow your music and your lyrics to be played. He spoke at this summit and, um, and uh, again, enlightening words and, and supportive of our work. And I think a lot of young people respond to him. That's why uh, we're happy to have him speak to them. So what else are you hoping to gain from <coughs> these forums? Well, it's an ongoing process. You know, I mean, it's to have people today. Today we talked a lot about it, a lot of People come out of real street uh, environments, really tough uh, environments, violent environments. And there were some people hugging who hadn't hugged ever. And there were some people talking about, you know, working together who had never worked together ever. And what we're building is a network, and it's consistent uh, work towards building that network. Whether you're white or Latino or black, you have already crossed the color line. Right. You have made something happen that religion couldn't produce. Ain't that something? Out of our suffering came blue. Out of our suffering came death. Out of our suffering came what they call R and B. That's right. Out of our longing for God to deliver us came God. Yes, sir. Was none of that before we were stuck. That's right. Hey. Take over. Come on, minister. And out of the suffering here together, and then became wrath. That's right. Oh. The suffering of your people produced you. And now you can live from those that produce you. All the children. They can't read Dick and Jen. That's right. But they can recite your record. Well, they That's right. 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 Oh, man, that's right. They're three years old. And they start quoting you. Right. Right. The question is, right. what are you feeding? You're the teacher. Right. 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 You are the teacher now. You have to accept the responsibility. But the children are not listening to the teachers in school. They're listening to you. You are there. I definitely am a teacher because um, I'm, I mean I have a son, I have I, I have siblings, I have brothers and sisters, and um, I have to teach them with what I what uh, with what I say. And when I look at all these other rappers, these big rappers, Jay Z, I, I mean I can name them all. They don't they don't, they don't say nothing. I mean I never got to see Mr. Farrakhan speak in person. 
uh, very moving, man. That's all I gotta say. I mean, what he had, what he said was people need to hear those things, you know, regardless who's saying them. It's like a some people need to be touched by those words, you know. You just need someone to encourage you in your life as who you are, just to tell you, you know, be better. You're the best. You know what I'm saying? So I really appreciated that, man. That he came and gave up that time to the people, and you know, just. You know, I I, I kind of studied under Karis One, man. So it's like you know, I was always come to the teacher. Let me say, come. I feel we're all teachers in our right, and we're all students at the same time. So it's like I don't really like to consider myself a preacher because I live through my experiences, and that's how I learn. So I teach myself, and teaching. I'm not. A lot of people are scared to bring that word up, but. Really, that's what you're doing. You know, you're teaching by example. Whether you care about the community or not, you're teaching people who you are just by living your life. So, yeah, I feel I don't put that responsibility on me, but I don't feel I'm just speaking out of the side of my neck for no reason. You know what I mean? There's always a purpose. I'm always thinking of people other than myself when I write music. The R&B singers are telling the truth and they're taking your money. I'm getting hit by the so it don't matter to me. When you listen to the Lord Hill who's thinking all of y'all, listen to the artists who are coming today, the Gil Scott, they're telling the truth too, and they're your consumers. 17% less rappers were sold this year than last year. So what happened? Well, it went to R&B. What are the R&B artists thinking about? The truth. The truth. Right. This brother knows the truth. So that's what we hope that we can inspire artists and young A&R directors to know that there's more to talk about in the same subject matter, because when you lose touch with the community, you stop selling records anyway. Mr. Simmons, Mr. Simmons, hold on one second. Uh, final call, final call number? Sure, sure. I have one question for you, sir. Um, tonight spoke of uh, starting a union, a hip-hop union. Uh, would you support him in starting a union, or will you rally all the other? I think I support the idea 100%. I think it's a great idea. I don't know, you know, I'm involved in supporting a lot of initiatives, and I, you know, and I spend more than half my time on these things, and I'm still trying to run a bunch of companies. So I do the best I can, and I certainly like the idea a lot, and I think it's a great idea, and it needs to be supported. We are really coming together as a unit, right, for a unity. I think for a artist, I think it should be a unity. Hmm. But anytime you look at entertainment, you got the athletes. Go ahead. Which is the basketball players, the football players, the, you know, baseball players. These guys have unity. You right? Unity. You guys have what's called eight. Right. And they walk these guys through every group. Have these guys might not even get a call. And they walk the red right through it. Right. And if they if they not get enough money, they go on strike. Right. They finish playing sports, they have retirement. Come on. Right. That's right. Music is more important than being an athlete. I've been both. The most important thing in a person's life is the happiest moment of the day is Valentine's Day. What do you want about this? Happy Valentine's Day. When <laughs> <laughs> so you're being asked, you don't know, fool on who you need. It's all right. I'll be yourself. But the thing about it is the most happiest moment in life is to be a wedding. They're going to play music. One of the most sad things in life, which is true, they're going to play music. So while music has any time it's a crisis, any time it's a war, I don't care if it's from the 60s, I don't care from 2001, 2002. They still heal the soul with music. So why is the music so important that everybody in the street is no human? There's no retirement plan. There's no dinner. If, 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 if you get sick, you ask out. No doctor plan. If you're a rapper, they will eat you for four years, and when you turn cold, turn cold, you out. It will be union. And I don't care what order it is. It all kind of bad deal. The manager wants to call because 90% of the managers work for the record company. The lawyer is definitely not the call. 99% of the lawyers work for the record company. But if the union calls, the union is okay, you can't get this individual a 
think the difference in this one was uh, Suge's presence. Mm -hmm. um, and there's two ways to take it. Some people were real upset because he was raw, he was to the bone, he didn't pull no punches. Um, and, in, and in some cases, he crossed the line and was out of line. Mm -hmm. But it also goes back to what the minister said. He said, you know, you plant seeds, one day you answer to those seeds. And, you know, there's a lot of people that buy the records. They have no problem when the magazine covers are out, they purchase it. They take the pictures, they do the, they support that lifestyle, um, either through admiring the product that's produced by it or admiring the figures that represent it. And um, when that shows up, and it's in your face, and it's like, I'm the real, you know, and it's just like in your face. Well, what did you, what do you expect? What about some of his ideas, the union, the hip-hop artists? Well, is that I realistic? Think, I think it's, it's, it's good, but I don't know how realistic it could be. It makes a lot of sense. But again, you know, goes back to what was going on. A lot of cards got pulled. That was what was interesting. Um, Minister Tut said, be yourself, mm -hmm. get with God, and, and really, you know, stay true to the thing. You know, mm -hmm. do something positive. Should was like be real, you know. If you're a gangster, be a gangster. If you ain't, then don't be in the game, you know. And the same thing really goes back to this whole union thing because cats complain about their lack of money, they complain about this, but you listen to their records, they, they cheddar this, they got this, they got all this. Well, how are you gonna, if you're a hustler, how are you gonna get your pet, your dues in terms of the union? You know, I mean, I mean, you know, your health care and all these other type of things. It's a challenge in a funny sort of way, and it's like what you're dealing with now, if you're dealing with the hard reality that's really basically telling people either get on the, you know, either stand up or sit down. There was one of the points was economic uh, empowerment. If this is a hip-hop summit, they said, well, hip-hop artists have all the money. Why would there be discussion of economic empowerment at a hip-hop They don't have all the money in the way that they say they do. Mm -hmm. Some people do, but... We're talking about the type of empowerment that allows you to control your destiny ultimately without having to beg to get on radio, beg to get in the record store, beg to uh, even put your record out. You know, so you got a million dollars, but you, you know, if you think of popping collars, you know, in June, and you have to go to a label that says, well, we can't put out your record until next year, what does your million dollars do for you except buy your house? And more importantly, if you're talking about economic, um, empowerment so that your community can be uplifted so you can walk around your neighborhood and not have to be concerned because you're not the only one with money that's a thing that you have to look at so i think there's a lot of different levels that that you know that this will hit people on i mean for me it hit it on one level on some it will hit them on another but i think what was powerful and disturbing about this is that it really reflected what the real is it's like we can have all this powerful and positive stuff, but when you go outside, there are people that are sitting there going, oh, I ain't trying to hear no God stuff, and I ain't trying to hear no, you know, keep it unified. It's, you know, I mean, you got those type of cats, and so how do you reach them? You can't ignore them because they're your brothers, sisters, next door neighbors, and um, eventually we're going to have to cross that line and deal with them in ways that um, I think we've been avoiding up to this point. You know, and I don't have a problem with most everything, anything I see or hear is not offensive to me. Offensive to me is poverty. Offensive to me is, 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 is suffering. And offensive to me is the conditions that create the language and the attitude that makes you mad. If you're mad about the mirror, uh, um, uh, don't break it. Look at it and, and figure out a way to fix it. Since Mr. Knight was supposed to talk today, was there something that, you know, he was, you knew he was going to talk about or you asked him to talk about or was it kind of just a chance to give him? Uh, we know, wanted everybody who was a leader in the industry to have a chance to say whatever was on their mind. Really? Mike Conception didn't talk much and he got more history and more experience and more uh, to say than everybody, but he said a lot of very important stuff in a short while, you know, so and he's an inspiration and he didn't talk. Everybody had the right to say what they wanted. DLC said something made me almost cry. Where you at? Yeah. Okay. 
who you wanted to be in, because he loved me. It didn't have nothing to do with the colors I represented, but the man that I was on the inside, and the man he is on That was a glimpse of the hip-hop summit in Los Angeles. Rapper D.O.C. personified the spirit of transformation. Joining me in the studio today is Youth Outlook News Magazine editor Kevin Weston. Me and Kevin traveled to Los Angeles to participate in the hip-hop summit. And now he gives us his perspective on the summit and the good, the bad, and the ugly. Amir Baraka, the pioneer jazz poet and political activist, wrote a poem called Who, done in the aftermath of the September 11 terrorist attacks. The West Coast Hip Hop Summit, held in the middle of Black History Month, caused me to ask the universe a similar question. Who shot Martin? Who shot Malcolm? Who wouldn't let Rosa Parks sit down? Who would let Fannie Lou Hamer vote? Who shot Biggie? Who shot Tupac? Who killed hip hop? The fact that we need summits discussing the state of hip hop is a testament to the seemingly lost vitality of this world changing music. The summit can be summed up by focusing on the three major figures there, Minister Louis Farrakhan, Russell Simmons, and Suge Knight, the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good Minister Farrakhan spoke to the higher consciousness of hip hoppers, spurning them on to become leaders, teachers. The minister has been a spiritual guide for the fatherless child of hip hop almost since its inception. He has recognized that hip hop music is among the highest forms of communication known to men, and those that well the power wisely can do whatever they dream. He recognizes that the future of hip hop goes beyond mere record sales and movies and videos we will inherit the earth. Russell Simmons, the bad, not bad meaning all bad, but bad meaning mostly good. This man is almost single-handedly responsible for bringing rap music into the mainstream of America. Management companies, independent labels, major label distribution deals, movies, clothing lines, he has done it all. Russell is everything all good about hip hop, you can make a gang of money doing it now, and everything all bad about hip hop. It has become so mainstream and so pop that a lot of what you hear and see borders on the edge of corny. Russell Simmons gets excited about the potential political power hip hoppers could have. He talks about the power of poetry while plugging his latest HBO venture. He talked about the music changing, coming closer to the people. He said that rap has lost sales to R&B because it isn't addressing the needs of the people. All true and mostly all good. Suge Knight, the sinister gangster side of hip-hop, brought the reality that as long as money is getting made in America, there will always be an ugly side of the game that everyone knows is necessary, but no one wants to be involved in. The ugly truth in the age of globalism is you better have some gangster in you. Suge got his hands dirty, did his time, and now is steadily building back his crumbled death row label, Brick by Musical Brick, while dissing contemporary stars of rap like Dre and Snoop, his one-time partner and artist now on their own and doing fine. I look at him, Russell, and Minister Farrakhan and ask the universe, who is killing black, brown, poor, potential for greatness in America? Who or what movement is going to lead the least of us into the future? Who shot Malcolm? Who shot Biggie? Who shot Tupac? Who killed hip hop? There were people in that Beverly Hills meeting room that knew the answer to those questions. And as America goes to war, these are really the only questions that matter to me. Thank you, Kevin, for that essay. Now, you mentioned that hip-hop, in a way, has gotten too mainstream. This is the now an industry, now the youth culture that started as what some people thought was going to be a short fad. Um, but what do you mean too mainstream? I know some artists deliberately stay underground. Mr. Pete, Master P stayed underground and made millions. But what is too mainstream? Well, I think that when, when black culture is reflected back to you in all facets of the media, like commercials and, you know, jingles that you hear, um, it just it, hip-hop is everywhere. And I think something similar happened in the 70s with the Afro. You know, once we started seeing Afros all in commercials and on TV, you know, we, you know black people went to Jerry Curl, right? Because we didn't want to wear Afros no more. So the, so the idea here is that um, once we see ourselves reflected that much in an American society that, society that we don't necessarily identify with, then we turn to something else. And I think that's happening with hip hop already. So you say it original. <laughs> um, at the Hip Hop Summit uh, that we were at, Minister Farrakhan talked about 
hip hop coming out of the suffering of the ghettos, uh, similar to the blues, similar to jazz, mm -hmm. um, and that some that now with this mainstream, some people have leaving the ghettos that they have benefited from. Mm -hmm. um, some statistics say the most consumers of hip hop are uh, white suburban youth. Mm -hmm. um, is that a threat? Uh, is that a problem? Well, I th you know, I think blues and jazz and that was true with blues and jazz let's just be realistic mm -hmm. if you're selling anything in america you better be selling it to mostly <laughs> white people but but you know i think the overriding idea here is that you know you can't cater to that audience mm -hmm. um if you if you come if the music is coming from a particular um people in a particular circumstance but you start catering to another people in another circumstance then the music gets watered down so much so that the people who are supposed to be creating it can't recognize it. Mm. Um, and I think that to a certain extent that's happening with hip hop right now. Now what about the political influence? Russell Simmons has testified at the congressional hearings. Uh, what is the political influence of hip hop? Well, I think that is largely remained to be seen. I don't, I don't think we've, hip hop has inflexed a lot of political muscle, but I think in the Bay Area with the Books Not Bars campaign and them, and them using hip hop in their campaigns, um, you can sort of see glimpses of what potentially what could happen um, if music and politics were joined in that way. But I also think we ought to be critical of, um, of artists who, you know, try to be politicians. Um, I think that, you know, not all of us feel like Jose Marti, you mm -hmm. know, in, in Cuba where you, you're a poet one day, you're revolutionary the next. I think, though, for the most part, artists should remain artists and stay true to their art. And they, you know, if they're able to reflect their own personal lives real well, then it's automatically political. So I see a danger in hip hop is becoming too political because then I think they, they lose the music side of it. And I know in the Bay Area, the Books Not Bars campaign to stop the building of the largest uh, juvenile hall per capita in the country there in Light in Alameda County. And some of the protests against the building of this new juvenile hall had spoken word, had hip hop artists, hip hop performers. And so hip hop really galvanized the young people that come around to protest a political move. Um, do you see that as a wave of the future, or is that being too political? I think, I think that's what activists see okay. as a wave of the future. I think, like I said, I think that there's some downsides to thinking okay. that way. But I also understand that if you want to bring young people in anything, you better have some music there. <laughs> it's probably a good idea to have loud music and some food, too. Um, everyone knows that hip-hop brings people together across racial lines, across gender and ethnic lines. So if you're trying to bring a large pe group of people anywhere, you better have some element of hip-hop involved. Now, um, this was the third such summit with such prominence that mm -hmm. Minister Farrakhan spoke to. Um, he's been the keynote in, uh, since 80, uh, 96. Mm -hmm. um, but it seems like they come together, they cry. Hip-hop artists, some of the mm -hmm. biggest gangster artists come together, cry, and are touched by mm -hmm. Minister Farrakhan's words, but mm -hmm. not a lot changes. Um, Davey D, the local uh, radio personality, wrote after the Hip Hop Summit that it seemed this time with DJ Quick with almost tears in his eyes, the mm -hmm. DOC who seemed so moved. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think will be the impact of such a thing? I think that, you know, let's listen to the music for mm -hmm. the next year and you'll be able to see. I think that since September 11th especially, um, artists have come to realize that it, it can't be all about money because tomorrow your money might be gone. As a matter of fact, Russell Simmons' apartment was right next to the World Trade Center building, so he lost his everything. Penthouse. Yeah, his penthouse. <laughs> um, so, you know, that, that has to bring home, you know, to artists who are largely based in New York that there's something bigger out there, that there's a whole world out there that maybe hip-hop hasn't been addressing as it needs to. Well, thank you very much for joining us today, Kevin. And that's today's program. At NCM, we appreciate your ideas and feedback. Call us at 415-438-4755. For the best in ethnic media, log on to www.ncmonline.com. Thanks for watching NCM TV, New California Media. Major funding for NCM TV, New California Media has been provided by a generous gift from the James Irvine Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation, the Ford Foundation, the Evelyn and Walter Fund, and the Annie E. Casey Foundation. Coming up on NCM TV, Afghanistan has been devastated with two decades of conflict. Now the war torn nation tries to rebuild. We explore the future of Afghanistan next on NCM TV, New California News. No one cares about race anymore. It's about black people.